Hello, this is Linda Bolton. I'm with NaturalCon Canada. And today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics. We're going to talk about the importance of magnesium in regards to bone density problems. Many people talk about the fact that there are great concerns about getting enough calcium. Everywhere you go, people are talking about the importance of calcium in the prevention of bone density problems. But you know, it's interesting to note that uh, North America and Finland actually lead the world in calcium consumption. And we also lead the world in diseases like osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, fibromyalgia, and heart disease. Why is that? Well, one of the reasons is because we don't get enough magnesium and we get too much calcium. Did you know that meat contains five times as much calcium as magnesium? Dairy contains 10 times as much calcium as magnesium. And many of our foods, our processed foods, are fortified with calcium. Things like bottled water, uh, cereals and breads, orange juice. Everywhere you go, people are supplementing with calcium. And as a, as a result of that, Dr. Carolyn Dean says that 80% of the population have 10 times as much calcium to magnesium in their body. So what, what happens then? How can that be a problem? Why do we have so many problems with osteoporosis? Well, in fact, the, uh, the low bone density issues are not related to too little calcium. They're actually related to too much calcium in the form of meat and dairy. And that all, of course, focuses on our acid alkaline balance. When our blood is acidic, what happens is the blood will pull or leach minerals from inside the bones to balance itself out to make it slightly alkaline. Foods that make your blood acidic are meat, sweets, dairy, and processed foods. Foods that make your blood alkaline are meat, or I'm sorry, are fruits and vegetables and minerals. So what happens is 70% of our diet in North America are fruits, meat, or I'm sorry, are sweets, meats, dairy, and processed foods and maybe 30% is fruits and vegetables and minerals. So what happens, our body is a magnificent thing and the blood will try to balance itself out by leaching minerals out of the bones into the blood. So it's not a lack of calcium that actually contributes to low bone density problems, it's our acid alkaline factor and of course, every cell in our body is made up of what we eat. So getting back to magnesium, how does magnesium actually help with low bone density? Magnesium is essential for the formation and structure of our bone breakdown and, and prevention of bone breakdown. And how does it do that? It actually regulates two different hormones that are essential for bone structure and prevention of bone breakdown. Magnesium also activates vitamin D to help calcium absorb. And I remember Dr. Carolyn Dean one time talking at a, um, at a seminar that she did where if you place calcium in a glass of water by itself, it will not precipitate out. It will actually uh, become cloudy. Some of the calcium will form at the bottom of the glass. And as soon as you add some magnesium into that glass of water, the calcium will totally become clear, which means that the magnesium has helped the calcium to dissolve and to become absorbed. It's very, very important for our bones that we have a, a ratio of two calcium to one magnesium within our body. But what happens because we have so much calcium in the form of what we eat and also in supplementation, we end up with this imbalance of 10 times calcium to magnesium. As a result of that, we, um, we end up with problems with all kinds of degener degenerative diseases. So how do you want to have a good body that is very healthy and doesn't have bone density problems? Make sure that you're walking, make sure that you are getting lots of good exercise, doing weight bearing exercises, cut your meat, sweets, dairy and processed foods down to 10% of your total overall diet and make sure that you're getting enough magnesium. We highly recommend Natural Calm, which is a, a very absorbable form of magnesium citrate that you mix in boiled water and drink hot like a tea. One of the reasons that I ended up with fibromyalgia is because 10 years ago I was diagnosed with a low bone density problem. My doctor recommended that I take a calcium magnesium supplement which I did faithfully every day and for myself I didn't have enough magnesium to make the calcium be absorbed into the bone. And 
long term the calcium built up in my muscle and I ended up with fibromyalgia symptoms which is things like insomnia, muscle aches and pains and the reason for that is calcium tenses muscles, magnesium relaxes muscles. Calcium excites the nervous system, magnesium relaxes the nervous system. So it's very important that we make sure we get enough magnesium into our body so that we don't have problems with these long-term health issues.